Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A um, couple questions, but before I start, um, I do want to remark that um, I had a meeting with a couple elders on one of the reservations who was concerned about the quality of the education, the quality of the, um, whether in fact the, the uh, Native American language that was being taught and spoke, spoken in, um, in immersion school was in fact more traditional enough. And so I don't want to, I want to raise that concern because I think it's really critically important that, that um, Native speakers traditional speakers actually are involved in the creation of these programs, monitoring the quality, because um, that's, that's what you don't want to lose. It's such a critical part of the culture itself. Um, Mr. Mendoza, um, your written testimony details how the Department of Education is working, obviously, to support Native languages through 10 separate programs in conjunction with three separate agencies. Um, uh, I think the tribes that I talked to would like to see more consistent funding streams to support these Native American immersion programs. Have you explored ways to consolidate these funding streams and programs to create flexibility in them so tribes can better utilize them? Uh, appreciate the, the, the question, Senator. Uh, the short answer to that is, is no, we have not. Uh, it, it has been clear to us that in looking at the comprehensive needs of these learners and the complex issues related to not just teaching uh, in a li linguistically sound manner, uh, but also the rich diversity that is within, uh, across the country, 566 different tribes, and then diversity even within that, that you, which you pointed out, which I wholeheartedly agree, that we need uh, uh, more information before we even talk about trying to collapse, consolidate, move, uh, and, and that's a big part of why we've invested in this collaboration with our partners to bring together in the 300 uh, participants who will be joining us here in DC, uh, that represents our grantees, the, the people who have been navigating uh, that, that, uh, uh, those funding sources that, sh that you mentioned. And so it's a critical first step for us to hear from them, to assess from, from what we're learning from them, uh, to try to piece with what we've learned through consultation, and, and then to look within to try to address those areas. Yeah, and I can understand what you're saying, but I think all of us would agree that we'd like to see um, as much efficiency in these programs because those limited dollars will go uh, a, a lot further. Um, also in your testimony, you highlight how the loss of Native languages can separate many Native Americans from their culture and their history. I've, I've seen that directly. I think many languages have lost their last Native speaker, which creates challenges in finding classroom instruction. Um, what efforts are you doing to identify and preserve the most vulnerable of languages? Do you prioritize the vulnerable languages, and how are you supporting instruction for Native languages which in, in, in my previous example where you have somebody who can judge whether in fact that is the right um, uh, uh, you know, program, whether that language actually reflects the language that is the traditional language. Here you don't even have that kind of ability to audit or, or to hold accountable those programs. How do you, how do you fix that issue? Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. It's such a, such a uh, expansive uh, question there. And, and one that, uh, you know, I have to kind of err on the same side as your previous question. I apologize. There's just a lot more work here to, uh, that we need to do than, than answers at this junction. Uh, you know, one of the statistics I cite is 375,000 language speakers. If we take, you know, those numbers and apply that to the native population as a whole, you know, we come up with approximately 7.2 percent and the percentage goes up even uh, you know, incrementally uh, as we look at constraining the, the uh, definition of, of who is an Indian uh, based off of that. And so the, um, the important work about identifying these languages is, is something that the initiative has really uh, been trying to grapple with and, and that we're talking about with our partners in, in the Memorandum of Agreement, uh, particularly around the idea of less commonly taught languages. Uh, that, that we currently look at for world languages. How, where do native languages fit in, uh, in a conversation such as less commonly taught, where you know, we have as many as 200 living languages right now uh, that at various stages are uh, you know, 
in a state of crisis, if not extinction, where we have uh, as well as uh, you know, areas of uh, st strength, whether we're talking about the uh, Anishinaabe language, the Blackfeet language, or else uh, the, the Diné language as well, which Diné language constantly makes it onto the list of, of uh, when, we're, when we look at states and, and the languages that they speak. Uh, so, so it's an issue that we're looking at very uh, closely, but it, it is only uh, a matter of conception at this point and how we're grappling with that issue across federal agencies. Yeah, I, if I can just make one last comment. I think all of us who have spent time in Indian country understand the significance of understanding the language to understanding the culture, yeah. the nuances and the variances. And so if we are going to hopefully build out hope as a result of reestablishing or, or working towards um, uh, building out community, that the preservation of these languages are absolutely an essential building block to doing that. And, and we're, we're, we're very interested in, in um, how we can participate. And I share Senator uh, Tester's urgency that um, we get a response very quickly to um, uh, the administration's position. Yeah. Uh, if I may, Senator Heidkamp, uh, uh, you know, when we w visited uh, with the president uh, to, to your state, uh, we also were able, had the fortunate opportunity to uh, visit the, the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe's partnership with Sitting Bull College, as well as the Lakota Language Consortium. And what is happening there is, is uh, for all intents and purposes, uh, happening in, in, in touch and go ways with, with our programs. Uh, they're either an ANA grantee at a certain point, an Office of Indian Education grantee at some point, but clearly the tribes are investing in this area. And that is what really keeps me up at night around these issues is that we're going to miss in the, in the, the analysis of just the federal impact of this, where there is such rich innovation and opportunity that is happening among tribes across the country.